Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on natural products and spectroscopy. Today we are going to talk on spectroscopy problems. Dear friends, in our previous session also we discussed on the spectroscopy problems. Today we are going to talk on the miscellaneous spectroscopy problems that is the remaining problems which we haven't covered till date. So we are going to cover all those spectroscopy problems in today's session. And for the discussion on the topic that is for, dis uh, for uh, discovering uh, all the aspects we have with us in the studios are uh, subject expert Dr. Bandana. Dr. Bandana is uh, assistant professor in department of uh, chemistry, Dial Singh College University of Delhi. Dr. Bandana is a prolific professor who believes in giving her best to the students and therefore through the life platform of CEC she explains the minute things in details and we believe that you discuss, discover and gain maximum knowledge through her. So let's welcome our guest Dr. Vandana once again. Hello ma'am, welcome Thank to the Thank you lecture. so much ma'am for nice introduction. Hello viewers, we have discussed about the natural product and spectroscopy. Uh, you know what is the spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is an advanced technique to discuss how to elucidate the structure of an organic compound. We have discussed in detail all uh, the four types of spectroscopy. We have discussed in detail UV visible spectroscopy uh, that uh, uh, tells us how to uh, uh, elucidate the conjugation especially in the organic molecule, how to calculate the number of polynuclear hydrocarbons. And in IR spectroscopy, we have discussed how to uh, elucidate the functional group in the organic molecule. We have discussed in detail the NMR spectroscopy that is nuclear magnetic resonance. It uh, tells us it in NMR spectroscopy we have discussed how to uh, identify the uh, hydrogen skeleton of an organic molecule and uh, we have also discussed in detail about the mass spectroscopy. You know uh, through mass spectroscopy we can calculate the exact molecular mass of an organic moiety. And we have discussed in detail about the fragmentation pattern through which we have an idea that an organic moiety contains which kind of constituent or fragments. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the spectroscopy problems which we have discussed, some problems we have discussed in the last lecture. Today, we will focus firstly in the ultraviolet visible spectroscopy problems. We will discuss in detail about the Woodward Pfizer rule and uh, other problems also that is mis the combined problems. So, first of all let us see this slide. What this slide shows? It shows how the lambda maximum effect by which effect? How this lambda maximum decreases or increases and uh, E maximum also affect by which effect? So, you can see this is the absorption and intensity shift in ultraviolet spectroscopy. First of all, let us see this hyperchromic shift. What is this shift? It can uh, affect by the oxochrome. You know what is oxochrome? It is a moiety of an organic molecule which uh, you know increase the E maximum or which gets shift this E maximum. What is bathochromic shift? This shift is due to the uh, increase in lambda maximum how it happens due to the presence of conjugation or we can say increase in conjugation. This is another shift, hypsochromic shift, how it happens because of non-conjugation. If we see by any reason conjugation removes in a molecule, so you will get a hypsochromic shift, we can say blue shift and this bethochromic shift is also known as red shift because you are, uh, you can observe from here that lambda maximum increases as far as we are talking about the bathochromic shift due to the presence of conjugation or due to the increase in conjugation. Another shift is also uh, showing over here hypochromic shift and you can see how it present due to distortion in geometry of a molecule. So, we have discussed in detail about all kind of shift. So, how the lambda maximum get increases or decreases. Let us continue. What are the Woodward and Pfizer rules? for estimating the absorption maximum of uh, which molecules alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds and these rules are later modified by Scott scientist. The basic value for alpha beta unsaturated ketones is taken as 215 millimicron and the alpha beta unsaturated ketone may be cyclic or six membered ring. 
For a compound you can see this is the formulas double bond CHCOX the basic value what will be 215 millimicron if X is an alkyl group. If X is hydrogen that is X is hydrogen the basic value get reduces from 215 to 207 and the basic value get also decreases if X is OH or OR right. If the double bond and carbonyl compound are contained in 5 membered ring for example cyclopentenone then for such an alpha beta unsaturated ketone the basic value becomes 202 millimicron and E maximum for such compounds are generally above 10,000. So, the structural increments for estimating lambda maximum for alpha beta unsaturated carbon compound what are the increments you can see if a compounds contain alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound as well as uh, exocyclic double bond the increment for exocyclic double bond for alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound will be plus 5. For each double bond endocyclic in 5 or 7 membered ring except cyclopentane 2 enone the increment will be plus 5 millimicron. For each alkyl substituent or we can say ring residue in alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound if alkyl substituent or ring residue present at alpha position the increment in lambda maximum will be 10 for beta position. Uh, it will be 12 millimicron for gamma or delta or we can say higher position even for even higher position the increment will be plus 18 millimicron. For each double bond extending conjugation the value get increased by 30 millimicron for a homoannular conjugated diene you uh, uh, if you remember what is homoannular conjugated diene when the double bond or we can say conjugation present in a same ring the increment will be plus 39 millimicron. This table also shows the increments for various oxochromes that which are responsible for increasing the lambda maximum when present in a combination of chromophore in a molecule. Uh, in the alpha, beta or gamma positions uh, these are the values you can see if hydroxyl group is present. Uh, in addition to the chromophore. So, this will be act as a oxochrome in alpha position the increment will be 35 for beta position 30 for del uh, delta for gamma no and for delta or higher 50. For this group that is O CH3 CO uh, plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. So, you can see the value will be same for chloride alpha at alpha position if this present at alpha position with respect to this alpha beta gamma uh, the value get increased by 15 for beta position plus 12 and there is no increase in when this group present uh, in addition to alpha beta unsaturated carbon group at delta or gamma position delta or gamma position or even higher position. For this group OR the value for alpha plus 35 for beta plus 30, for gamma 17, for delta 31 or for higher 31. SR group that is thiol group no increment at alpha position, gamma position, delta position but the value get increased drastically when it will present on beta position. Same you can see NR2 that is substituted amine no increment when it present on alpha, gamma or delta but get increased in a huge amount that is plus 95 value get increase when this moiety will present at in addition to the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So, here is a problem you can see this kind of structure and how can we calculate lambda maximum for this moiety. The basic value for a cyclic alpha beta uh, with respect to this carbonyl compound alpha beta and because of this double bond this is unsaturated. So, we can observe easily this is a alpha with respect to this carbonyl this is alpha beta alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, the basic value will be 215 and in the structure 2 beta alkyl substituent you can see at beta position. So, the value of absorption maximum is 215 and 2 beta alkyl substituent 2 multiplied by 12 that is 24. So, we calculated the value 239. 
this is alpha, this is beta and these are two beta alkyl substituent and the observed value is 237 and epsilon maximum is 12500. When you see how can we say that uh, uh, the value we have calculated is right, we have to compare the calculated value as well as the observed value. Where both are in good agreement, it means the calculation is right. Another moiety, uh, organic moiety is there, you can see this is carbonyl group, alpha, beta and in you can see the basic value will be 215, 2 beta ring residue, you can see I have marked over here 1, 2, these are the ring residue. So 24 value because beta position and this is exocyclic double bond with respect to this carbonyl, so 5 value also added. And you can see the calculated value 244 millimicron and the observed value 241. So, both are in good agreement. So, we have calculated the right value. Another moiety is there. How can we calculate? It is an alpha, beta unsaturated cyclopentanone system. Basic value is 202, 1 beta alkyl. This is with respect to this carbon alpha, beta and you can see there is a beta alkyl substitution, so 12 will be added, one exocyclic double bond, this is one exocyclic double bond and this is double bond extending conjugation and you can see uh, this is delta ring residue and this is gamma ring residue. So, by calculating, by adding all these values, we come to conclude that calculated value is 285 and which is in good agreement with the observed value. Another example is here, you can see this is carbonyl group, alpha, beta and gamma. So, basic value 215 and alpha ring residue, this will be alpha ring residue, this will be gamma ring residue, sorry delta ring residue, this is gamma, this will be delta and one exocyclic double bond, this will be one exocyclic double bond and this is uh, double bond extending conjugation and if you see this ring, this is the hexocyclic ring which contains uh, two double bond within the same moiety. So, it is a homoannular conjugated diene. So, by calculating all these value, the calculated value comes out to be 317 millimicron and which is in good agreement with the observed value that is 319. So, this is how we can calculate the lambda maximum for various moieties. Another moiety is here, basic value 215. If we see alpha, beta, gamma, delta and delta plus 1, delta plus 2. I repeat again, this is carbonyl group, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, delta plus 1, delta plus 2. So, you can see this is the two double bond extending conjugation, 1, 2 and 2 exos, uh, uh, 1 and 2, this is double bond extending conjugation, this is exocyclic double bond and when we add all these value, it comes out to be 351 millimicron and as far as ring residue is concerned, you can see this is delta plus 2, this is delta plus 1 and this is beta ring. So, these are the ring residues, I have marked 1, 2, 3, 4. These belongs to the delta plus 2, delta plus 1 and this is beta ring residue. By calculating all these value, it comes out to be 351 millimicron and you can see the observed value is 354. Now, let us uh, discuss the solvent effect on carbonyl compounds. It may be noted that the value of absorption maximum that is lambda maximum is shifted due to the change in the polarity of the solvent that is the absorption maximum is solvent dependent. More polar solvent will experience hydrogen bonding with the carbonyl group and N2 pi star transition. If you remember N means non-bonding electron to the excited state will experience blue shift that is hypsochromic shift. Solvent correction are there. If you are taking this sample in hexane, you have to remove this value that is plus 11 because of hexane solvent. For dioxin solvent, the value uh, contribution from dioxin plus 7 for methanol 0, for water minus 8 millimicron, for chloroform minus 1. So, after making the necessary solvent correction, whether it is plus or minus, 
the value of absorption maximum is obtained in ethanol. So, you can see there is a correction from solvent also, there is an effect from the solvent also. So, we should what we should do? We should take the solvent which is neutral to the uh, that particular absorption. In case there is a cross conjugation in a compound that is the carbonyl compound has alpha, beta and saturation on either side. You can see here uh, there are three rings A, B, C, the conjugation is extend from here not from here, then the value of absorption maximum is estimated by considering the most highly substituted conjugated system. So, you can see this conjugation is extended by the ring C not by the A. So, we have to calculate in consideration the ring C not ring A. Now, calculate the value, how can we calculate? In ring B, the carbonyl group is conjugated on either side, but the conjugated system is highly substituted towards ring C. I told you earlier also, the basic value is 215. Uh, and now, how can we see? Uh, now, look carefully, with respect to this carbonyl group, we are looking alpha, beta, gamma and delta. And now, look at the ring residue also this ring residue at alpha position, this ring residue at beta position and this ring residue at delta position. So, we have to be very careful while calculating the ring residue. So, these are the contribution because of the different position that is alpha contribution is 10, beta 12, delta 18. Now, you can see B, uh, double bond extending conjugation uh, is 30 this is homoannular conjugated diene. So, the calculated value is 324 millimicron and which is in good agreement with the observed value that is 327 millimicron. And for such compounds, the value of extension coefficient that is epsilon maximum is usually high. Quinones, in quinones weak non-bonding to pi star that is why non-bonding? Because lone pair of electron non-bonding to pi star means uh, if a moiety contains non-bonding electron as well as the pi electron. So, simply we are talking about this uh, carbonyl group. Uh, transitions are responsible for imparting color to some simple quinones. The absorption values in para quinone are, you can see these are the values alpha diketones and alpha ketoaldehyde also acyclic alpha diketone such as biacetal exists in S trans conformation with a dihedral angle 180. The spectrum of biacetal shows the normal peak weak R band, R band are due to if you remember how the R band arises due to the non-bonding to pi star transition at a value of 275 while a weak bond near 450 nanometer. The second band at a value of 450 nanometer is formed as an interaction between carbonyl groups. These are the carbonyl groups. The position of the long wavelength band of alpha diketones incapable of enolization that, that is there is no possibility of formation of enol reflects the effect of coplanarity upon the resonance and thus depends upon the dihedral angle between the carbonyl groups. You can see these are the examples. First of all, camphoquinone and dihedral angle is 0 to 10 degree and lambda maximum is 488 nanometer and you can see the epsilon maximum is just 17. Another molecule is here benzyl. The dihedral angle is 90 degree. Here the dihedral angle is between these two carbonyl group. Lambda maximum 370 nanometer, epsilon 40 and this is isodural, dihedral angle 180, you can see this particular part of this isodural and lambda maximum at a value of 490. So, we can easily uh, identify these kind of moiety which is uh, of incapable of enolization rather they are alpha diketones. Beta diketones, the ultraviolet spectra of beta diketones depend on the degree of enolization. Now, you can see this is also a diketone, but enolization can also form. This is the ketoenol tautomerism that is by uh, the transfer of this proton 
uh, this carbon will get have a uh, this carbon will have a enol form also. The possibility of intramolecular hydrogen bonding stabilizes the e enolic form in acetyl acetone. The enolic species exist to the extent of 15 percent in aqueous solution. In the vapor phase or in a solution in non-polar solvents, it exists to the extent of 91 to 92. So, you can see the effect of solvent also. Uh, the absorption depends directly on concentration of the enol tautomer that is this kind of and you can see the difference value. Cyclic beta diketones such as cyclohexanone dione exist almost exclusively in elonic form even in polar solvent. The enolic structure shows strong absorption in the region of 230 to 260. So, you can easily uh, identify this kind of a structure in a moiety uh, due to the pi to pi star transition in the enone system. The formation of enolate ion in an alkaline solution shift the strong absorption band into the region 270 to 300 nanometer range region. Another point compounds with the nitrogen to oxygen bonds. Four groups that is nitro group, nitroso group, nitrates and nitrides contain multiple nitrogen to oxygen linkage. So, how can we identify this kind of bonding due with the help of ultraviolet visible spectroscopy? These structures show weak absorption in the near ultraviolet re region resulting from non-bonding to pi star, non-bonding because of lone pair of electron and pi due to the uh, lone pair as well as the pi electron are there. So, this kind of transition we are talking about. The sulfur atom in sulfone has no sulf lone pair electron and lone pair of electron associated with the oxygen atom appears to be tightly bound. The saturated sulfoxides absorbs nearly 220 nanometer with the intensities of the order of 1500. So, you can see the table what it shows the lambda maximum and epsilon maximum of the compound which is having uh, the uh, nitrogen and oxygen bond for example, nitromethane absorbs at a lambda maximum value for this particular transition or we can say R band uh, 275 nanometer epsilon maximum 15. Uh, if you are taking the solvent heptane for 2 methyl 2 nitropropane this is the value for lambda maximum this will be the epsilon maximum in ether and uh, this is the another value observed and octyl nitrate 270 and 15 pentane as a solvent. Now, benzene and its derivative the B band at B band arises due to the pi to pi star transition uh, at a value of 254 millimicron in ultraviolet spectrum of benzene shows a great deal of fine structure in the vapor phase. The fineness of the structure diminishes if we can if we scan it in a hexane solution and is almost completely destroyed in ethanol solution. In hexane solution benzene shows absorption at a value of 184 this value and this value. The band at 254 is a result of forbidden transition that is which transition are not allowed in the highly symmetrical benzene molecule and benzene shows a series of low intensity bands at a value of 230 and 270 millimicron. And you can see uh, this is the uh, lambda maximum value in nanometer and this is the epsilon maximum. Uh, these are the observed peak, observed spectrum, ultraviolet visible spectrum. This is for benzene, for naphthalene, for anthracene, for phenanthrene and you can see these are the absorption spectrum. It has been noted that absorption maximum for polynuclear hydro aromatic hydrocarbons moves to longer wavelength. We have seen just you can see these are shifted from right side. Comparing the ultraviolet spectrum of benzene with naphthalene, the value of absorption maximum as well as the extension coefficient are more for naphthalene as compared to benzene. So, you, you can easily distinguish whether it is benzene or whether it is naphthalene. 
Naphthalene absorbs at a value of 480 millimicron and epsilon maximum 11,000 while anthracene absorbs at a still higher value. Pentacene, you have seen, this is pentacene absorbed at a value of 580 nanometer or we can say millimicron, epsilon maximum at a value of 12,600 and appears blue. So, you have seen that we have uh, go through the uh, Woodward Pfizer rule or we can say uh, modified Scott rules which shows the uh, particular amount of contribution in alpha, beta unsaturated com carbonyl compounds whether the alkyl substituent presented alpha, beta, gamma or delta positions and uh, as well as we have seen that uh, what are the uh, uh, effect of uh, if we increase the uh, one nucleus that we can say uh, there is a great distinction between the uh, values of lambda maximum when we are talking about benzene or naphthalene or even higher molecule. So, uh, hope you understood all this. Uh, thank you so much. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this productive session on spectroscopy problems. Friends, there is a lot of information waiting for you but you are requested to be with us as we are back after a short break. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello friends, welcome back to the session. Friends, here we are for you to explain you in detail uh, the spectroscopy problems and for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios, Dr. Bandana. Dr. Bandana is Assistant Professor in Department of Chest uh, Chemistry, the Alsing College, University of Delhi. So, let us welcome our guest and let us try to understanding the spectroscopy problems. Hello ma'am, welcome uh, to the session. Thank you so much ma'am. Hello viewers, we were talking about the uh, spectroscopy problems, uh, UV visible spectroscopy problems and we have discussed in detail in the last uh, part that uh, how to calculate the lambda maximum for alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Let us continue it how to calculate the lambda maximum for acyl benzene. What are acyl benzene? This is the acyl group COX and this is the benzene. So, this is a acyl benzene. The basic value, if you know there is a particular basic value for each moiety and it is 246 if X is an alkyl group or alicyclic residue. If X is a hydrogen atom, the value get rid, uh, uh, become 250 millimicron and if the basic value is 230 millimicron, if X is OH or OR, so basic value will be 230. The structural increments in millimicron for further substitution on the aromatic ring whether it is an ortho, meta or preposition you can see here. These are the exochrome. What are exochrome? You are know, uh, you are aware of very much that the uh, moiety which is in addition to the chromophore present in a moiety and is responsible for the increase in the lambda maximum. How it get increased? When alkyl group present in ortho position, the value get increased by 3. If it is in present in meta position, plus 3. In para position, plus 10. So, you can see this table and observe these are the 
different oxochrome and these are the responsible values increase in different position. It is important to note that the effect of para substituent is more pronounced for the bathochromic shift and you know what is bathochromic shift? It is observed due to increase in conjugation or we can say due to presence of conjugation in a moiety. Let us see this example. How can we calculate the lambda maximum for this moiety that is chloroacetophenone? In this case, X is an alkyl group and thus the basic value is 246 and this you can see this is an alkyl group basic value 246 and chloro, uh, chloride this chloride ion present with respect to this acyl group present in para position. So, value get added by this particular chloro group is 10 millimicron. So, we can calculate this, this comes out to be 256 which is in good agreement with 254. So, we can calculate easily lambda maximum for different moiety. This is another uh, structure and the basic value is 246 and uh, you can see there are two uh, substituted group OH, OH. One is present with respect to this acyl group at meta position and what is uh, one is present at a para position. So, calculated value comes out to be 278 which is in good agreement with the observed value. Another moiety is there, the basic value is 230 by bromine present at para position. So, 15 will be added, 245 and you can see observed value is also 245. So, exact matching. Uh, another molecules we are discussing here, di substituted benzene. When electronically complementary groups such as amino or nitro are substituted para to each other, there is a pronounced bathochromic shift in the main absorption band compared to the effect of either substituent considered separately. For example, para nitro aniline absorbed this value and this is the epsilon maximum value. It is due to the extension of chromophore from the electron donating group to the electron withdrawing group. Which is electron withdrawing group? This is your nitro group and what is electron donating group? Amino group. When the two groups in the para position are not complementary or ortho or matter to each other, then the absorption maximum is close to that of the separate non-interacting chromophores. For example, matter dinitrobenzene lambda maximum uh, is 200 millimicron while E maximum is 13,000. For condensed ring system, you know what are when the ring are condensed to each other, the range of absorption maximum for polycyclic hydrocarbons is very great and spectra are usually complicated. So, such spectra are useful as fingerprints. Moreover, the relatively non-polar substituents have a very small effect on the shape and the position of the absorption peak of parent hydrocarbon. Let us uh, see what is the classification of condensed. First of all, cata condensed. Cata condensed means no carbon atom belongs to more than two rings. For example, benzene, naphthalene. We can also say these are linear cata condensed compounds. Bent cata condensed means uh, these includes phenanthrene type molecule and the spectra of cata condensed hydrocarbon resemble benzene and bathochromic shift is observed with the increase in the number of ring in the structure. You can see for benzene the lambda maximum is 254, for naphthalene it is 312 while for pentacene it is uh, uh, further increase in the lambda maximum. For pericondensed system, what are pericondensed system? A carbon atom belongs to more than two rings. Here is an example you can see coronine. This is coronine. One carbon atom is not only attached to these ring but this ring also. So, pericondensed rings show absorption at longer wavelength as compared to cata condensed structure. And this will be observed at a value of lambda maximum 305 millimicron, 340 millimicron, 428 millimicron. Heterocyclic compound, you know what are heterocyclic compound? When a carbon of a benzene gets substituted by another heteroatom, we can say nitrogen, we can say oxygen, we can say sulfur. How can we compare, how can we identify that these are the heterocyclic system? The ultraviolet spectrum of 5 member heterocyclic carbon compounds can be compared with the cyclopentadiene. It has been observed that in this case a forbidden R band due to non-bonding to pi star transition is also observed with a very low value of E epsilon maximum. 
if you see in furan you can see the values observed lambda maximum 252 while epsilon maximum at a value of 10000 the chromophoric or oxochromic substitution brings about bathochromic as well as hyperchromic shift b band in pyridine you know how b band is observed uh, because of non bending to pi star transition shows a marked increase in intensity with the increase in the polarity of the solvent on the other hand this band for benzene is little affected in the position as well as intensity that is epsilon maximum the presence of substitution in pyridine usually brings hyperchromic effect for example b band for pyridine observed at a value of 275 get shifted to 262 while epsilon maximum to 750 get shifted to 3560 for 2 methyl pyridine it get shifted uh, to 263 and epsilon maximum 3650 for 2 chloropyridine so you can see the effect of solvent also in different moieties and this is the uh, epsilon maximum for the uh, pyridine in ethanol and this is the UV visible spectra. In some cases like hydroxypyridines, hypochromic shift are also observed. Sometimes a change in pH brings about a marked change in the absorption maximum of the substance. So, it can easily catch by the pH change in pH due to the change in chromophore. The change in chromophore is explained as the shifting of equilibrium to one of the tautomeric forms from the change in pH. You can see the existing uh, how the uh, tautomeric uh, effect for example in 2 hydroxypyridine and pyridinone 2 exist in tautomeric equilibrium this is pyridone 2. The spectrum of these compounds was shown to favor pyridine 2 which is an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and clearly it shows the uh, absorption maximum toward uh, shifted towards the right that is towards the red. Now, how can we identify that in a particular molecule there is a steric hindrance or coplanarity you know what is a steric hindrance the bulkiness of a molecule or the bulkiness of the group at a particular position. Woodward rules give reliable results only for those compounds in which there is no strain around the chromophore. We know that in case of extending conjugation the position absorption depends upon the length of the conjugated system. Longer the conjugated system higher will be the lambda maximum and larger, larger will be the extra extension coefficient that is epsilon maximum. If in a structure pi electron system is prevented from achieving coplanarity that is it get distorted then there is a marked shift in the absorption maximum as well as in the extension coefficient. So, you can easily identify the departure in the value of absorption maximum calculated from the empirical rule is due to the steric crowding which distorts the geometry of the chromophore and the conjugation get reduced. For example, in biphenyls and substituted biphenyls, uh, the transition pi to pi star for diphenyl which readily achieves coplanarity absorbs at a value of 250 millimicron while epsilon maximum 19000. But in 2 methyl you can see the coplanarity get distorted by introduction of methyl group at a position 2 in diphenyl. So, there is a blue shift or we can say there is a decrease in the lambda maximum or we can say there is a diminish of epsilon maximum also as the two rings remains no longer coplanar or we can say there is a diminish of coplanarity there is a uh, distortion in geometry. So, we can easily ob uh, observe by the uh, change in the values towards the blue shift towards the uh, lesser side toward the uh, decrease in lambda maximum. The absorption maximum for 2 methyl diphenyl is 237 millimicron epsilon maximum 10250. Also nitrobenzene observes at a value of 250 millimicron and epsilon maximum 8620 while ortho nitrotolvene absorbs at a value of 250 this is epsilon not E uh, this epsilon maximum due to the reduction in coplanarity. So, we can easily identify whether molecule is uh, 
crowded or distorted uh, from the UV visible spectra. If the compound containing alkene chromophore is capable of existing as geometrical isomers, you know what are geometrical isomers, cis and trans, whether the same moiety present on the same side uh, parallel to the double bond or the opposite side inclined like this. This is trans isomer of this moiety and this is a cis trans isomer. The trans isomer is found to absorb at longer wavelength with a higher value of extension coefficient as compared to the cis. So, it, we can easily identify whether the moiety is cis or trans. If there is a possibility of formation of cis and trans isomer, then only we can uh, point out this point otherwise not. It is due to the more effective pi orbital overlap possible in trans isomer which thus achieve coplanarity of pi electron system more readily. And this is the synamic acid and these are the cis and trans isomers and due to the greater crowding in cis form, you can see this is the steric hindrance we can say both bulky group, this is a bigger group as compared to the hydrogen and this is also a bulky group. So, we can say that crowding is there, we can say steric hindrance is there and the geometry of the alkene chromophore is distorted and departed from the cloplanarity results. So, trans um, isomer will observe at a higher lambda maximum. Transcinamic acid absorbs at a value of 272 uh, millimicron, this is millimicron and epsilon maximum at a value of 15900, while for cis synamic uh, acid uh, this value get decrease to 68 and this value also get decrease at 10700. So, this can be easily distinguished on the basis of these lambda maximum, epsilon maximum value. Steric hindrance to, uh, there is a slight steric hindrance to coplanarity about a single bond it has a very little effect on the position and intensity of the absorption maximum. If the steric hindrance to coplanarity about a single bond is more, then there is a marked decrease in intensity. We have uh, seen it in the last example and the absorption maximum of 2,5-dimethyl nitroaniline occurs at a value of 385 millimicron and uh, epsilon maximum 4840 showing a red shift and a marked decrease in intensity as compared to the para nitroaniline which observes at a value of 375 millimicron epsilon maximum 16000. Another example is here, uh, a blue shift is observed in case of 246 trimethyl acetophenol which observes at a value of 242 millimicron epsilon maximum 3200 as compared to the paramethyl acetophenone at a value of 252 uh, while um, silent maximum at a value of 15000. Another example is there, you can see this is cis stilbene, this is trans stilbene. Uh, out of these two isomers, a distortion in coplanarity in cis stilbene is due to the steric hindrance of course, you can see these are the bigger moiety as compared to the hydrogen. So, this results in lowering the value of absorption maximum at a lower extension coefficient and a band appears at a value of 295 millimicron, epsilon maximum 25000 in trans still B has a value of 283 uh, millimicron and epsilon maximum 12300 uh, 12, in cis still B. So, these are the different values observed for different moiety because of the different isomers which can be easily distinguished with the value of UV visible spectra. Now, what are the fluorescence and phosphorescence? What are the contribution towards the ultraviolet uh, visible spectrum? You know what is fluorescence? It is the light of comparatively longer wavelength emitted from a molecule after it has absorbed light or different or short wavelength. So, what it said? It has a higher wavelength as compared to the observed. How? You can see anthracene is a colorless substance and its electronic absorption spectrum lies in the ultraviolet region. But it is found that pure samples of anthracene when viewed in the ultraviolet light give off a blue visible light. And this is called fluorescence because it shows the 
uh, mechanism of fluorescence the emission of light or fluorescence stops at once when the irradiation that is uh, irradiation is removed or we can say ultraviolet light is removed on the other hand the phenomena of phosphorescence is said to occur when the substance continues to emit the radiation of longer wavelength you can see what is the difference even after the irradiation is removed so when we removed ultraviolet light even the radiation is continued from the mole molecule or moiety it is called phosphorescence and if it is not coming out after the removal uh, of irradiation uh, of ultraviolet light it is called fluorescence how it happens we have to see when the molecule in the ground state absorb light ultraviolet light its electron get promoted from ground state to the higher state that is uh, first excited state here is called e1 or to the higher excited state we can say e2 e3 e4 and so on when the electron returns from e1 to e0 that is from the first excited state to the ground state it emits radiation which is of longer wavelength or lower energy than h nu so we can talk about in terms of wavelength we can talk in terms of energy also that is photon energy it is called h nu f and what f it represent over here fluorescent radiation in another mode the energy may be lost from a first excited state in between that is t1 what is this this is in between uh, this is the ground state and this shows the energy uh, e not in ground state this is in first excited state and this is in between in between means uh, t1 to the ground state the main difference between e1 and t1 is the electron spin orientation that here we are talking about the uh, uh, orientation of electron if we are talking about ground state they are paired that is one is up and one is lower the spin of the two electron must be anti parallel which originally occupy the ground state molecular orbital the original promotion of electron to first excited state followed by its return to the lowest vibration sub level that is e1 does not change the spin of the electron but the transition from e1 to t1 does change the spin so if electron comes from e1 to e0 there is no change in spin that the spin will be the same but if the transition uh, that is the if the energy come from e1 to via t1 then spin can be same spin of the electron can be same and can be different energy states containing only spin paired electrons are called singlet state that is what is a singlet state in, in which the spin of the electron is paired while those with the parallel spin electrons are called triplet state so these are the different state for t1 in the excited triplet state electrons are further apart in space and thus electron electron repulsion is minimized while in case of triplet state more stable than singlet state and are longer lived thus this state may survive after the irradiated light is removed after this electron jumps to e2 state that is ground state by emitting the radiation of energy and this is called phosphorescent phosphorescent radiation or energy now what is the use of this mechanism this is phosphorescence or fluorescence fluorescent spectrum for anthracene consists of four maximum these are the values 380 400 420 and 450 nanometer important use of fluorescence phenomenon are shown by the molecules of fluorescence this is a uh, fluorescein molecule and optical brightener derivatives of 44 dash this is 44 dash diamino still been this shows the phenomena of fluorescent that is after removal of the ultraviolet rays even they show the radiation of higher value the intense green fluorescence of aqueous fluorescein solution makes it an excellent material for leak detection and an excellent marker for sea rescue operation etc this property of fluorescence is applied to in the polymer chemistry to detect and identify plasticizers and in the st study of impurities 
biological applications include the study of three dimensional tertiary structure of proteins by measuring the proximity of the known fluorescent groups within the protein. These fluorescent groups are generally aromatic amino acids. Phosphorescence seen at night in the sea is due to the several species of marine microorganism which when agitated by an oil splash undergo an enzymatic alarm reaction which liberates energy in the form of green light and this is called bioluminescence. So you see the uh, significance of phosphorescence or fluorescence. Now another point is very important point is here electronic transitions for charge transfer complexes. Iodine imparts violet color in hexane while it is brown in benzene. When aniline is dissolved in chloroform and tetracyanomethylene is added to it, the deep blue solution is formed and this color shifted is due to the formation of complexes between the pairs of molecule. As a result, two new molecular orbitals are formed by the uh, formation of a new compound and which undergo new electronic transition. The formation of these complexes involve the transfer of electronic charge from an electron rich molecule to an electron deficient molecule that is uh, a charge is going to transfer from one moiety to another and these complexes are called charge transfer uh, complexes. These are the examples aniline this is the electron donor molecule all these are electron donor moieties and these are the electron acceptor moieties. So a charge can transfer from here to here. The field pi orbital in the donor molecule overlap with the depleted orbital in the acceptor molecule due to this two new molecular orbitals are formed and you can see how the tra charge transfer complexes are represented here. This moiety is giving the electron to the iodine and this is giving to this moiety and this moiety is giving to this moiety. In the benzene iodine uh, complex lambda maximum for benzene is at a value of 255 nanometer but for molecule iodine in hexane uh, the lambda maximum value get increases 500. This charge transfer complex has an intense additional band at around 300 nanometer but modifies the violet color of molecular iodine to brown. The lambda maximum for aniline is 280 and for tetracyanoethylene it is 300 but the complex of aniline and tetracyanoethylene that you can see there is a charge transfer and value get increases drastically from 280 from 300 to 610. So you can easily observe whether there is a trans trans charge transfer in a complexes or not with the value difference. Now what are the applications of ultraviolet uh, spectroscopy? Ultraviolet spectroscopy has been mainly apply, uh, apply for the detection of function group that is for the detection of oxochrome or chromophore, the extent of conjugation, the detection of polynuclear hydrocarbons when we compare with the other data. The technique is also applied to detect the presence or absence of chromophore. The absence of a band at a particular wavelength may be regarded as evidence for the absence of that particular compound. So the presence as well as the absence of the peak gives clear idea, clear idea what are the possibility in a molecule. In this spectrum you can see this is very important point while observing the ultraviolet is visible spectroscopy that if the spectrum is transparent above 200 it shows the absence of a conjugation, absence of a carbonyl compound whether it is aldehyde, whether it is ketone and benzene molecule, aromatic compound also bromo or iodo compound. So these are the uh, various you know uh, very important point is here. So we should keep in mind this point an isolated double bond or some other atoms or groups may be present. It means that is no definite conclusion can be drawn if the molecule absorbed below 200. The extent of conjugation can easily identify addition in unsaturation with an increase in the number of double bonds, uh, the increase in the value of n, you can see this is the value of n, shift the absorption towards longer side, towards red side and if it is found in the absorption occurs in the visible region that is at about 2, 420 millimicron if n is equal to 8. For polyene such n key appears colored to the human eye. So you can easily identify 
the conjugation through ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. It also distinguishes between a conjugated and a non-conjugated. You can see these are the different isomers of a particular and we can easily distinguish with the help of lambda maximum. The forbidden non-bonding to pi star band for carbonyl compound the compound will appear at a longer wavelength as compared to the alkyl substitution and an alkene causes a bathochromic shift. A unknown compound can identify by comparing its spectrum with the unknown spectra. If the spectra consider, coincide, the two compounds must be identical. If they are not coincide, they are not identical. If the spectra do not coincide, the expected spectra, uh, structure is different. Identification of polynuclear hydrocarbons you have seen in earlier slides and it is also useful. You can see it is also useful for the elucidation of the structure of vitamin K1, K2 and also A1 and A2. Because the ultraviolet spectrum of K1 and K2 are due to the presence of some chromophore that is 2,3-dimethyl naphthaquinone and the absorption maximum of this compound are these are the values and the elucidation of the structure of vitamins A1, A2 are also possible by this technique uh, because you can see these are the respective values for vitamin A1 and A2. We can also identify uh, the preference over tautomerous that whether it is uh, uh, in all form or keto form and identification of a compound in different solvent. The structure of compound changes with the change in the solvent. Chloral hydrate shows an absorption maximum at a value of 290 in hexane while absorption disappears in aqueous solution. So, is, it can easily distinguish clearly the compound contain a carbonyl group in hexane solution and its structure is this whereas this is. So, we can easily identify uh, the different structure with the help of uh, different insolvents also. And this is the last point determination of configuration of geometrical isomers. You have seen in the earlier slide that whether the uh, isomer is cis or trans we can easily calculate it with the in because trans isomers observe at a higher value while cis trans isomers observe at a lower, uh, lower value. So, hopefully you will understand how to uh, identify the unknown structure of an organic moiety with the help of a spectroscopy. It is very advanced technique and it is very foolproof technique. Any molecule you will want to identify, you have to take the help of spectroscopy. And the more you know about the spectroscopy, all kinds of spectroscopy I have discussed in detail ultraviolet, I have discussed in detail IR, NMR and mass spectroscopy and hopefully you will understand how to elucidate the structure of a unknown compound by comparing with the literature. If you have any doubt, please let me know. I will make you clear that what are the points which I could not. Otherwise, if you see all the points, you will definitely able to identify the structure of a unknown compound with the help of spectroscopy. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this session. And friends, we believe that you have lots of question to be answered. If you have any question, do write to us at info.cc at nic.in. We will try to give answers to your questions when next time Dr. Vandana visits our studio. So, friends, keep watching us. Keep writing us at info.cc at nic.in. We will be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma thank thank you, so you once again.